I'll get the microphone going now. <laughs> huh? We're on oh, well. show, show number 28. We've <laughs> had to ask each other. So, uh, yesterday, you kind of dropped the proverbial bomb on everybody when you said, well, the earth is going to be destroyed. That's a judgment. There's no point in saving it. It's too far gone. Yeah, I've had an option. And uh, so what does that mean for uh, all the souls on the earth? Well, you know, when people uh, come up with the idea of the rapture mm. and all the, uh, the Christians are going to be raptured up and then come back to the earth, well, that's not on. Uh, there's a, the devil always works in a similarity of, uh, of ideas. A counterfeit. Because it's a counterfeit. So it's got to come up with a certain... Now, I, I've been, uh, as I've, I've told people before, uh, when I was a child, I went to another realm was instantaneous and uh, I uh, had no memory of the past and yet I was totally familiar with what I was and who I was at that time. We're talking about the outskirts of Nazareth and I'm only a child of uh, 2424 days old. That's what I worked out today. And uh, then I was back on the earth again. But I did remember where I'd come from. But I've just come 2,000, well, 1,900 odd years jump in time. So it was, it was very interesting in that sense. Now, um, the earth is really a, uh, a sorting ground for the cattle uh, in that uh, the animals of the earth are human beings which are behaving like animals. And uh, what happens to animals? Well, they die and the soul doesn't go anywhere, right? So the ones that are above all that, these are the children because they've already been uh, reincarnated to be in the end time where another prophecy has got to uh, be fulfilled and that is, suffer the little children not to come unto me. Well, the reason for that is is that the, uh, the adults, uh, they're the demons uh, or the house of demons, as you might say, and there's a lot of them. Uh, one human being can hold hundreds of demons, and I'll, I'll give you some example of that. When the uh, the man that was uh, among the tombs, when he was cast out, or the demons were cast out, um, the demons... It's the Gadarene, isn't it? The Gadarene yes. prophecy. So mm. what's he saying? Well, they went into the animal. Well, the animal, in this case, was the swine or the pigs, which then ran into the sea. Well, what's the sea? Hell. Where's hell? Future. Right, you're in hell now. Fear him that can destroy both body and soul in hell. So the, the animal, the swine, that uh, were the inhabitants or the, the vessels of the demons, is, is a, a play on words in the sense that, that the, the demon goes forward in time to the wait for that person when he comes back again who had the demons cast out of him. And we're talking about 2,000 that was cast out of him. So he's born again and then that man would have to resist the 2,000 demons that want to get back into him, bringing more demons, the actual ratio of the parable of uh, the person that has the soul garnished clean, swept clean with, from one demon. Uh, the demon will wait for the child to be reborn again and then attack it. And uh, not only will that demon get back in, it'll bring seven uh, worse than before. And I've, I've mentioned Mary Magdalene who had the, the seven devils driven out. And uh, I lived with her for 13.13 years back in, in Australia. And uh, not only she had the seven driven out, she had seven times seven brought back into her because she had all sorts of strange demonic behaviour. So, uh, uh, and that included uh, turning her... Uh, away from her own children being molested by her uh, sister's kids, older kids by 10 years. Right? She even let her 10-year-old uh, daughter um, sleep in the same bed with her 18-year-old cousin. And I asked her, what the hell would you let her do that for, a 10-year-old child? And she said that, uh, oh, she, she uh, put up such a fuss that she, she wanted to. And I said, are you insane? You let... 
a young man at 18 years of age who's got all his hormones racing is going to be in bed with a 10-year-old child, right? You don't think he's going to be all over her? Are you insane? Well, as it turns out, um, she verified that. The, the girl verified that. This is my stepdaughter. Verified it to me. That this, she was all, almost at the point of, of taking him to court, mm. right? As an adult, when she's in her 30s, right? So uh, this is the kind of environment that um, Michelle, uh, who was also an adulteress on her first husband, uh, she had all sorts of demons in her. And she was absolutely 100%, no problem at all, she was Mary Magdalene. And she had to come back. And where did she come back to? The same environment to be with me as she was when she was my first wife in uh, Galilee. And that's where the hatred of you was so extreme because you are Martha. And it was Martha that is the wife that produced the twins that uh, gave us a genetic line so that we could ourselves be born back into. And that's how, it's, how it is. So it's got this leapfrog effect of uh, a death, reincarnation, death, reincarnation. And in the Essene, if you're going to get anything that's accurate, you have to go to the Essene Gospels to, uh, and be very careful of those too because they are subject to translators. But you get the general idea. You see where the Gospels of the, of the Bible have uh, borrowed heavily against the Essenes, so they knew that the Essenes were the true ones and so they've got to alter those slightly and that's why your Gospels are slightly altered. And then it's uh, taken over entirely by the the churches with the uh, Saul, uh, and who was Paul. Now, Saul in the uh, Greek concordance is only uh, two words away from Satan. So if it was the other way around, if it was Jesus that was two words away from Satan, would they not have a field day with that? Yes. Right? But Saul can get away with it. Why? because that's the ones they want to dominate. So you've got all these different books. And I, I should say, again, I've never read any of it except for three verses, and that is where uh, Saul is on the road to Damascus and Jesus appears to him. Right? When, of course, uh, if had that been the case, this would have been the second coming. But it's not Jesus coming back anyhow. This is the whole point. So the the entire New Testament is a gigantic Rothschild manipulation because you take the uh, NIV, it is owned by the agent for Rothschild, which is the, uh, the Zionist pig, um, Rupert Murdoch. Right? So they get away with it by saying, well, if you're going to retranslate something to make money on it, it's got to be substantially altered. So, oh, well... We can't say it exactly the same as the King James uh, because uh, it's, uh, we can't get a copyright on it and therefore we can't uh, make money on it. So that's, that's basically the story there. So the whole point is everything stems back to the Rothschilds. Um, the church started dealing, Catholic Church started dealing with the Rothschilds 187 years ago. Uh, they took over the, the Vatican Bank and all that kind of thing. That is why... When uh, we was talking to Pope Benedict and I sent him the uh, uh, 49 points on um, Vatican III, which he was very much interested in finding out what my thoughts were on that. So I dismissed Vatican II as being a complete abomination, allowing the door open to the Jews. And uh, the, the entire uh, Catholic system has been taken over by Jews. That's why they, if you look at the, the Pope running around, they got a little cap on the top of the head. Well, that's entirely Jewish. Right? So uh, it's all Zionism. So they've taken it over lock, stock and barrel. So uh, you can't get, like when we was in Italy, you couldn't get finer people than the Italians themselves. They're lovely people, uh, very much into family life and, and so forth, which is a great thing. Unaware that the uh, popes overall have been battling. There's good popes and bad popes. You've got Pius the, uh, the Ninth, he was locked up. And that's the words that Pope Benedict used to me, that uh, he was locked up. I've become a prisoner become of the a Vatican, prisoner of the Vatican like, like Pius the, the Ninth. 
say you got Pius the tenth, Pius the eleventh, Pius the twelfth. Well, you got eleven and twelve, which was the first two that were in the uh, countdown, if you like, of seven Pope kings of the Vatican. <coughs> then you got uh, uh, Rossini, another Rossini, uh, Roncalli, who became uh, John the Twenty Third, and he introduced Freemasonry because he was a thirty-three degree Freemason. And he was the one that instigated the move to uh, have Vatican uh, I eliminated and replaced by Vatican II. And then you got uh, Paul VI. Now, if you look up on the internet, uh, just, pr- just punch in photographs of Paul VI and you'll come up with several where you have two men, two entirely different people, because Pope the VI, uh, uh, Pope Paul VI was murdered and replaced with an imposter who was, of course, a, a moron. And uh, there's even, uh, with the modern photography, you can tell where he's had plastic surgery and all sorts of things to make him look similar to Pope uh, Pius. Pope, uh, help me out here. Paul the uh, Sixth. Paul the Sixth was after... OK, so then you had the next Pope, good man, uh, and that was John Paul the Second. John Paul the First. Oh, I'm sorry. I told you to help me out. <laughs> well, I am now. I'm paying attention. Uh, and uh, he lasted 29 days and murdered him. <laughs> And uh, they used the old thing they tried on me, which is a, uh, uh, something that stopped your heart. Well, they stopped, they stopped my heart 11 times, but I still kept going. And um, that happened in Egypt. So then he was replaced by the Jew uh, that was uh, the beloved John Paul II. Now, Pope Benedict, he admired the man and loved him as a, uh, a wonderful Pope. In actual fact, he had no idea that this asshole was a Jew and that he was promoting the uh, Vatican II. <clears throat> so uh, I didn't speak about that with Benedict. Uh, I didn't want to burst his balloon completely. And uh, after him, of course, is uh, Benedict. So you start doing a name count there. There's, there's uh, eight men that held the position of Pope, and this is a prophecy of 1711 Revelation. So, uh, and the eighth Pope will become Pope again. Well, of course, that's Pope Benedict. Now, the Antichrist, who hasn't uh, taken on any of the uh, formalities of being a pope, is Francis. So he's not a pope in that sense, and he certainly wasn't a pope after Benedict had already been speaking to me, because that's the end. The whole idea of being a pope is to hold the the uh, church in uh, as a custodian for Christ when he shows up. Now... It's, it's fine for a man like Francis to say, well, I've looked at all the evidence, we've had our scholars on to it and our mathematicians and astronomers and so forth and we spent three months working out on this guy to see if he is Christ or not. No, in 45 minutes he said, no, he's not him. Right? And then made sarcastic remarks about Christ has got an Australian accent. So what he's saying basically was, in his stupidity, Christ has an Australian accent. In other words, he's admitting I'm Christ but uh, then putting me down because I've got an Australian accent. Well, hello. Is that a <laughs> dumb? How about a, a, uh, a Pope that's got an Argentinian accent? <laughs> right? What an idiot. So this man um, is what the church is all about. So he's a, a Rothschild shill again. They're particularly uh, uh, controlled, dominated entirely by the Rothschilds. Now, who would try to say that it's somebody else? Well, of course. Like the Orsini family, apparently. So. Oh, of course. But that's that's typical. They uh, otherwise you'd have been follow the money. Mm, you'd have been born on Orsini Avenue. <laughs> yeah, if I'd been born on Orsini Avenue, you say, well, Orsini is the Antichrist in the in big time, right? The devil himself, Lucifer. Mm. But no, now, it is Rothschild. Now, getting back to the Earth, well, it's already destroyed. Now, well, what is interesting is that in September 2010. Now, we have been getting. Everything we've been turning up now for years has been destruction, total destruction. And I remember particularly in September 2010, uh, because the trolls had a a great deal of fun with it, uh, is that um, I think it was to do with the eclipses, the lunar eclipses and things that would... But anyway, again, it was spelling out destruction. And I think at that time it was pointing to the eclipses that were occurring in November 2011. Yeah. Well, Fukushima occurred, as you know, March 2011, so it was all over then. 
Yeah. It was all over. Destruction, total destruction. Now, um, even Einstein, as I've mentioned a few times, he was an admirer of, uh, of the Nazarene. And uh, he was basically saying that the people that try to dismiss uh, Jesus um, or the Nazarene, as he referred to him, in uh, clever manip manipulation of words, uh, can't do that to the magnificence of the Na Nazarene. So he's uh, a Jew from a Jewish family. He had learnt the Talmud, and uh, I'd imagine a man of his intelligence would have been appalled by it. And uh, therefore his whole family was uh, not religious. They'd gone away from it as being a case of insanity. And But then when he read and went to a Catholic school. All of his education was from a Catholic school, but learnt nothing about Jesus, which I had the same experience. Uh, I never got taught a thing about Jesus when I went to Catholic school. It's, it's extraordinary. I got beaten a lot. Right. So uh, there was a, a, a father, a brother at St Michael's the College that I went to, and I'd walk in uh, and uh, he'd be waiting for me at the... At the sort of hiding around the corner as he goes into the classroom. And, uh, good morning, Master Marshall, he'd say. How are you today? I'd say, good, Brother Lucius. And then he'd give me 12 cups of cane. Why? Well, he'd tell me over and every day. Well, he did the same thing. He'd say, no one is good but God. Well, what he didn't realise was he was caning God at the time which I think is rather amusing. But you'd think that I would uh, say, well, oh, I'm okay or something like that. I wouldn't say I'm good, right? I would refuse. I would say it every morning. I am good because I am good. Right? I'm not going to tell a lie about myself. And that's uh, the, the kind of experience I've had all the way through <clears throat> to see that the world has, has totally been... Uh, uh, forced into a situation where the children of the world are suffering at the hands of the adults, which are all going to be exterminated. That's it. So the children, um, what do they say about a child? Give me a child until he's seven years of age and uh, he's mine forever. Well, uh, this is what we're up against. Uh, these education of children, especially the Jews, who are all, all quite insane. Uh, but uh, it doesn't matter what you are genetically, what you are is uh, what your soul is. So uh, uh, all these children in the world have got to be rescued from this uh, abomination. So uh, as I've had told you many times, I've stepped from one realm to the other instantly and it happened and uh, I was totally unaware where I'd come from when I was talking to Mary. Totally unaware of it. But when I got back, I was totally aware of where I come from. And that was talking to Mary. And she told us, or told me, that uh, uh, we were Essenes and if the Jews found out, they would kill us. Well, I knew we was an Essene as a six-year-old child in the playground and no one had ever spoke about Essenes Sadducees or Pharisees, especially in the Catholic Church. Um, and it wasn't like you go to the internet and look it up. There's nothing like that. All you had in those days was the uh, Rothschild-controlled uh, radio and, and, uh, and uh, newspapers and churches. So how did I know I was an Essene? Well, that was a part of the primordial, if you like, memory. But that's built into you, and when it's required that uh, I can and was reminded because I was absolutely mortified by the fact that these two nine-year-old children were saying that Jesus was either a, arguing the point that one was a Sadducee and the other one said, no, a Pharisee. Well, uh, <clears throat> it took me into an instant rage. So that memory was very, very strong. Although, had you asked me two seconds before that, uh, the word is seen, I would not have known what it was. But suddenly it was brought to the surface. So the world is totally toast. Um, Einstein, getting back to Einstein, what he said, that uh, with nuclear uh, used as a fuel to, uh, 
or generating power will kill the user. That's what he said. So. All right. Um, now, on that same subject, of course, Scylla the shoe. <laughs> so look for it. When the angels get here, they'll be sorting out all your evil bastards, and then we'll be just doing a transition into another realm. Well, uh, Scylla's asking, mm -hmm. do we have any idea when that is? She well, I don't want to say that because it'll tip off, tip off the demons, right? Mm -hmm. Well, don't talk about it. I'm just giving you a hint now. It's going to happen. Right. So be ready. Be ready. Be ready for anything. Rejoice. Yes. That's the main thing is to rejoice. Keeping it happy. And Don't what worry. What was you saying here? Yeah, well, I was just reading Scylla. Her battles. Everybody's battling. It's the battle of survival, the battle of sicknesses that have been... Well, um, them. a little magnet is uh, ideal, like... Milk is, uh, for example, in America, if you drink milk, you're committing suicide. But you can cure the problem with uh, your food by putting magnets in them. So uh, if you have a uh, plutonium, which is the, the biggest killer, um, you're breathing it into your lungs. Everybody in North America every day gets five hot particles on average because you breathe 10 metres, cubic metres, what in America is 11 cubic yards of air and uh, in that is at least five hot particles of plutonium. Now, I said in one of our other uploads um, that the uh, MOX fuel, uh, which was used in uh, Fukushima, illegally, put in by the Israelis, because they're the security company that's... Can you imagine this? Like, you're using Jews <laughs> as your security, right? <laughs> you're all insane. That fox in the chicken well, house? <laughs> well, they're worse than bloody foxes. Mm. Right? At least foxes will take a chicken and eat it. These foxes that you allow, they're in there to not only eat you, but they're also there to destroy everything about you and your children and sacrifice you in statistic ways that uh, is... If this ain't hell, like, like wake up. If this ain't hell, what is? Right? Fear him, as I said. They can destroy both body and soul in hell. That's what's going to happen. Right? Now, uh, in the scriptures, of course, there's uh, lakes of burning fire where... Uh, the false prophet and the antichrist. Now, the false prophet and the antichrist are the one person. The, the way it's written, um, uh, people think that, that it's two different people. It's, it's the one person. It was Paul at the time who came 15 years after the crucifixion. He didn't know Jesus at all. And he perverted the things that he, he taught. So that's what all the churches are based on. But today it is um, Francis. It's not some dude on the political scene who might be uh, trying to call the shots from Czechoslovakia or somewhere, or the, the Czech Republic. Um, there are many... Everybody is Antichrist who, who is uh, standing against, opposing the Christ. And that goes for all of the truthing movement who have refused to make the announcement. Um, so most of the world is Antichrist. That's what makes it hell. So, like, <clears throat> talk about uh, Russia and Putin and all this kind of thing. Well, in Russia, there is two heart facilities. That's like a hello. And uh, the heart facilities are creating earthquakes and controlling weather. And uh, even the, around Washington, apparently, the heart is used to uh, push back the clouds so you don't get the radiation from Fukushima. Yes, there's a protective buffer around Washington Why and Why couldn't East heart Coast be used Canada. to push the radiation that's coming from Fukushima back or southwards or northwards to the North Pole where the magnetic fields are going to have an influence on the plutonium? Might do that, of course. So the whole thing is a setup. So there's the good cop, bad cop. Now... Uh, you have said, oh, what a good man Putin is. Bullshit, right? 
Oh, but his father was this. His father was that, and he no, became no, a I Christian. No, I don't know anything oh, no, about his father. His mother was a Christian. Just let me finish here. Mm. So gonna, that nose of yours has to have a bit of an operation. <laughs> so any plastic surgeons it's out there? Dribbling at the moment. We're going to have to get it a bit smaller because you keep on sticking it in. <laughs> right. Very, very naughty places occasionally. Well, I like to keep the record straight. I know nothing about his father. Was you his wait, mother was well, a Christian. Well, why don't you wait and I finish bloody well talk and then you will have the record straight. Right? His father was a communist. Right? He was the head, his son, Putin, was the head of the KGB. Right? He knows exactly what's going on in the world. He knows exactly who, the, who they are that's doing it. Um... You would think, like the CIA, who, and I know personally a man that was a murderer for the the, uh, the Navy, which is uh, primarily the Pentagon, which is the CIA, anyhow. And uh, the only reason he he got sick and tired of killing people, and he told me this, uh, was because uh, they were killing non-military targets. Right. So he'd get an order to go and kill someone in Europe and then he'd off with his assassins and they'd go kill him. Well, he's not a very nice fellow. But the reason he uh, is still alive and can talk about it, especially to me, uh, he's probably dead now because he was talking to me, uh, his father was an admiral. So how many admirals he got in America? Start counting them and then see who the sons are. And uh, the one who isn't married at the moment or is dead... That was the assassin I'm talking about. What was his name? Ralph. Ralph. So here's a man named Ralph. That's father was an admiral. So go through your people out there who are in America. Go through your your uh, your uh, military, uh, rather ad, uh, navy, and see who's an admiral with a son named Ralph, and see if Ralph is still alive. The chances are zero. Right, because he told me what he was doing. Right. So, Putin, you think he doesn't know all these things? You, you think he doesn't know who's who in the zoo? Do you think he doesn't know that they've got two harp facilities in Russia? Do you think he doesn't know who was behind the first meltdown? Chernobyl? Right? It was the communists that done it. It was communists at the time, right? He was, he was totally in control of the KGB. You think he's a nice guy? No. Now, if he was a, such a nice fellow and uh, going to these Christian meetings with the, the uh, church there, and, oh, there he's lovely. Yet, he has all the information on me. Now, when you're in a government and you're in a position of having these top mathematicians... You could take a, a minor, uh, what, say a student, who is a first uh, year student in mathematics at a university, and let him just do the numbers on me. Right? He would report back absolutely 100 million percent. This is it. Not doing it. So there's not one government on the earth at this moment in time, and this is also applying the same thing for uh, Iran, who is also supposed to be a bastion of, of good, right? They know. I've actually had communication from a manager uh, when we was talking about, uh, uh, at the time we crossed over the Milky Way galaxy equatorial line, and I was saying that the solar system, once it goes across the line, the Coriolis effect, which scientists believe is caused by the rotation of the Earth, it isn't. It's caused by the Milky Way galaxy, the magnetic fields. And sure enough, on the day I predicted it, the moon flipped upside down. This is 11-11 on uh, December the uh, 11th, 2011, at 11-11am. Right? We got movies of it, of the Coriolis effect and the moon flipping upside down. Right? Now the moon, is, at the moment, is still, flip, still teetering back and forwards, back and forwards. The axis of the Earth has now shifted, which we've already proven that when it was up in bloody England. The English people are so dumb. I mean, if you're going to make a new movie about Star Wars, you don't have to have costumes for these people. Just go to any club. And these strange English people, I'm telling you, you've never seen anything like it. Right. So 
the, the entire country is uh, consumed by the British monarchy, the, uh, the system itself, and they're, not only do they, uh, do they believe all this bullshit they go on with, but they also believe that uh, uh, they're the greatest people on earth, the smartest people on earth. I mean, they've been the most dumbest people on earth. The smartest people on earth are Australians, and they're stupid. Right? Some of the greatest inventions of all time come out of Australia. You don't hear about that. So uh, it's the chemtrails, in particular, as we're driving down from Scotland into England. We had a rather uh, a uh, very very good bit of photography by my little sweetheart here, who uh, was taking. I said, "Look, get your camera out and take the," and she did. She took twenty minutes or so of this. No, it was ten minutes. <laughs> Can I tell a story? In my mind, it's 20 minutes because it was agony, right? <laughs> yeah, well. Like, hang by your thumb for 10 minutes, it'll feel like three days, right? Yeah. So what was she doing? When we ran the camera back, she just got a photograph of her own eye. I was, I was holding it like this on the, on the window. And I'm looking at it oh, thinking, why, yeah. why can't I see anything out of the viewfinder? It took me 10 minutes. It was ten minutes, a very long ten minutes. I think one of the emails. One of the emails I sent. I wasn't the Pope. seeing anything through the viewfinder because I had it reversed. And when, uh, I, when I was sending emails back and forth to the Pope, he's he was expecting me to be quoting scripture and all this shit. You see, <laughs> and I was telling him stories about my life, and one was um, was driving through the uh, Kruger National Park in South Africa, and there's this. Um, an animal is called a sable. It's a very beautiful animal. Uh, it's black and white, and uh, it's like a very large uh, springbok or an, an animal that is, say, slightly smaller, about the size, same size as a small horse. Long horns, right? and they jump tremendous distances. So when they come to the roadway that we was driving down, this track was maybe about 20 feet wide, there's uh, a sable that jump across. So Ireland is sitting next to me and we've got a 300mm telescopic lens on this uh, Topcon camera we have. And um, I said, now put the camera, get it up on your eye, and when I say click it, click it. Right? So uh, we had it all set up. Sable jumps, click it, nothing happens. Didn't wind the film forward. This happened several times. I felt like... Uh, I was in a, in a uh, insane asylum at that point. So finally, she gets the camera up and there's a waiting for a sable to jump across the road 100 metres down the road or whatever the case may be. And this rogue elephant runs out beside the car, overtakes us, we're only doing them slow, and trumpeting and carrying on. And she's got the camera up against her eye and... The elephant runs across in front of us. So she's sitting there terrified. So I reached across and pressed her finger down and clicked it. And uh, when it, the film, in those days, you had to get it developed, right? When we got it back, it was a photograph of the arsehole of the elephant. Is that not a, uh, a sign right there? Uh, 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 uh. This is uh, a quote by Einstein. Um, Joel's put it together with look at this photograph of the plume they're calling it let's call it the angel of death throughout the northern hemisphere Einstein warned our world faces a crisis as yet unperceived by those possessing power to make great decisions for good or evil the unleashed power of the atom has changed everything save our modes of thinking and we thus drift toward unparalleled catastrophe. Yep. And then um, in a later photograph, that Rodney put this... Oh, this is somebody else's photograph, Rickard, somebody, I don't know who it is, but um, they're the angels standing, watching from above the events upon the earth and, and Rodney just added the time is near. For most it won't be pretty. That's right. I'll give you that much. It is very near. And it ain't going to be pretty. 
Now, the people that piss me right off is the ones that are going to be raptured in their own mind. And they're going to leave the suffering of the, the people, India, children, Indian adults, because they're not the right religion. And then uh, all of the Africans, little babies that they've let starve uh, for decades. And uh, all this uh, war that's going on. And, of course, they all know that I'm back. That's not good enough either because I've got to be riding a white horse and they've got to join them up in the clouds and they're going to come back after seven years of tribulation. You've been in tribulation for bloody centuries, right? I mean, look at the history of the Catholic Church. People being burnt at the stake for having a black cat. I mean, this is, a, this is the insanity. Of, if, if that's not the devil, I don't know what it is. Right? And it's perpetuated by the people that are these rapture-ready fools, Right? They're the last ones I'd have in my bloody kingdom, right? That's a fact. I've met a few of them, and they are quite insane. What about the woman that um, our grand piano comes from? Now, this is the way it works in the life of God. All prophecy needs to be fulfilled, and as Jesus, he spoke about the time of the end. Now, this is from Luke and being rejected by that generation. So it was 33 AD before he goes to the cross, a prophecy of this time now. So being rejected by this, that generation, because this generation, 33 AD, is back now and is the generation that is being judged. So <clears throat> the, the, the piano, my beautiful piano, Christmas present from 2012, wasn't it? Mm. Gum tree. Um, <clears throat> Gum tree was where I found it, and uh, this particular is uh, K. Kawaii, and it was 42 years old the, uh, the year that we bought it from a Scottish couple down on the Sunshine Coast. Now, we went down to look at the piano, and we did end up buying it, obviously. The number on it is 600, and that means restoration. However, the woman and uh, the husband, they were selling up their home because, huh? because they oh. were getting rapture ready. They are of the... Um, yeah, they're, they're Scottish, and they were selling all of their belongings to be ready to leave this world, meeting the Christ in the clouds. So that was enough for me to uh, say, well, you don't have to sell everything and meet him in the clouds. He's here in your living room. <laughs> knowing, knowing the kind of woman that she was, she, she would have spent an hour that morning in prayer seeking the Lord, telling the Lord how much okay. she loves him and how much she can't wait to be with him, etc., etc., etc. So I, I could not. I couldn't leave that place without telling her, well, this is him. He's sitting in your living room. You're talking to him now. And uh, he's about to... We'd already paid the deposit for the piano. Well, that was enough for this woman to have to get up and leave the room. She started uh, sputtering. What? <laughs> and she had to leave the room. And uh, didn't get into it too much. I just said, yes, he's here. It's all, it's all okay. Anyway, uh, was able to speak to the husband a little bit. He was, he, was, he was wanting to know a little bit more. However, he was thinking, well, this could be a possibility, I suppose. Bottom line, we left that place. The woman, uh, <laughs> she'd, she'd vanished. And... Um, when we got home, it uh, was all to do... Her response, the timing, the stars spelled out this generation, yeah. which is the generation that he's had to suffer at the hands of through rejection, the abuse, and they're so deluded. So this woman was this generation. It was uh, her response. So that's how things are fulfilled in our lives through events... Um, each of us are influenced by our angels to 
think along a certain line to just go looking for something as it was for you mm. yesterday, your social security number. <laughs> yeah, for Canada, yeah. That, that, that you hadn't, uh, hadn't done anything about before, had you? You mm. hadn't broken it down. Woke up yesterday morning. Busy. <laughs> yeah, breaking down everything else. Broke it down yesterday morning after being on his brain all night. And then uh, three groups of three numbers, the square root of, etc., etc. Well, all of those numbers just spelled out exactly where we're at. The earth is totally destroyed. That is this one. So, for those who... Got to remember, I'm not destroying it. You are. Mm. You've allowed it to happen. That's the whole point. So, um, you've got to clean up the mess. And I'm here for the children. And uh, you either become like a small child and throw everything that you believe out the window and accept me, and then you've got a ticket. Otherwise, you're toast. And the Essene revelation is spot on. It uh, talks of the holocaust of the earth that engulfs the entire earth and all of the people. Well, there's been talk, I believe, about the fission occurring of Fukushima. That would uh, create a hell of a holocaust that would engulf the entire earth. Well, um, although as horrible as it sounds, um, the word... God in the King James Bible. Now, the King James Bible is a book of numbers that was manipulated by King James, who was anointed upon the rock of the scone, which is, it goes back to my ancestors who were anointed upon it. And it's Genesis 28 11, which is accurate. And the word God um, is found 4443 occasions in 3877 verses of the King James Bible, which is accurate because that's where I was born and that's how many miles it is to the South Pole. Um, now, the word 4443 as a concordance number is fire. Whoa. Right. Now, I'll get the concordance book and I'll just show you uh, what it looks like, which you've probably never seen it. Now this is small print, that's why I use these glasses to look at it. Actually, um, someone said to me, oh, I feel God, why do you wear glasses? And I said, well, I was at the RSL club, we returned to Salvage League club, and I was in there, and this old lady walked up and prod me with an umbrella, and she said, put these on, you look better with glasses on. So that's why I wear glasses. This is uh, the concordance, the James Strong's concordance, right? Now, it contains every word. I'll just go back a little bit. Uh, pick your word, and you'll find it's listed in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, pages of words, like the words that aren't found with computers normally. There might be a word like the, in, uh, on all these kind of words that um... now I've just gone through that much we haven't got to the numbers yet so this was uh, compiled uh, and released in the 1800s uh, we get into the that's just the word and so it lists everywhere the word and is found so uh, for a mathematical mind uh, I can show you uh, the codes of how many times the word and is found. Or you can say, look up 3168th time the word and is found. It's certainly in there because there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times the word and is used in just the first uh, few um, uh, chapters of the Bible. So you've got another one like in, on, the well, there's there's so many in there that it's uh, uh, not listed in most computers of the concordance, and that you've got to be very careful of as well. There's the blue Bible, and they've added words 
So there's 8674 words in the King James Bible, Strong's Concordance, which is of it. However, on the internet, these are in the libraries, by the way, so you can go and find them in the library, in the English-speaking library. We'll have it. Now, um, the Bibles themselves are primarily an abomination, but it does show you both sides of the evil coin. Right Now, we can look up the words which I've said before, uh, numbered 4443, and I'll do that now, in the Hebrew section. So, in the... Uh, Hebrew, it is um, from two words, 4428 uh, and 7311. King of height and exaltation. Right? So then you go to the Greek. So you go, right, you're talking about a king here. And you say, well, is there any connection to the same numbering in the Greek? So we're going to the Greek section. So I said there was eight, six, seven, four words of uh, in the Hebrew part of the dictionary. So if you was to call that uh, days, how many years would it be? So how many days are there are there in three one three point one six eight years? That's that's the answer. It's three point one six eight years is eight, six, seven, four days, and it was the age the Pope was. 31680 days old on my. What? It's actually 8.674 years is 3168 days. 8.674 years is 3168 days. I got again. So but 10 times You that. didn't jump in this, this quickly. 86.74 years, which is the age the Pope was, <laughs> right? He, he was 31680 oh, days old. I love doing that. You think I don't know, do you? <laughs> <laughs> got to jump in every time. I get her every time. Now, I'm looking up 4443, and then you can read it out. Right. Where is it? 4443. Now, when you're talking in the Greek New Testament, it is the, the, the Hebrew section of the Old Testament is the prophecies of the future, and then Jesus comes along and fulfills those prophecies, and then the dual prophecy in Isaiah in particular, uh, but when there's the Jesus speaking in parables, why parables? Because everything was told in parables for the, the fools out there so they won't know what it means. So when you say something in a parable, the idiots don't get it, but the uh, spiritually in tune do. So there's a the number there. So that's, this is 4443 in Greek. And the word is pura. And it means fire. So it comes from 4442, which is the previous one. Which is four which and is fiery. And fire. lightning. Mm. Now, you get struck with lightning, you might find that it is very, very burning hot. Right? And uh, that's, that's how these things work. So we know that the 4443 number is a very, very specific number because it is the, uh, a number of times that the uh, word God is found in the King James Bible. And in it, in these 3, 8, 7, 7 verses, we know that's the hospital I was born in to the South Pole in miles. And those 3, 8, 7, 7 verses contain 4, 4, 4, 3 times the word God is used. Big G, small G, doesn't matter, just the word God. Because quite often the, uh, the Bible will use the word God. It's not re pertaining to the Almighty. It's talking about possibly some of these Sanhedrin Jews uh, thought they were representative of God. Uh, even the rabbis today, when they speak, it is God speaking. Like, how dumb is that? But uh, there's your strong concordance. Now, the work of that 
is equivalent to about four Bibles. Right? So it's taking every word of the Bible and it's in there. So there's all sorts of codes in there which are very complex. Uh, it's not necessar necessary for me to go into them all because uh, I'm basically talking to very few people and uh, I think they already, the ones that do listen to me at this point in time re realise who I am and I don't need to keep on proving it over and over and over again. I only say this for a newcomer and quite often I'll repeat what has been told to my followers a hundred times but it has to be told again and again on the chance that it's a newcomer who's come into the fold. So that's why I do it. I was going to work out the percentage so far of uh, uh, the adults in the world. What, 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 what do you think the breakup well, of children? Well, no, seven. So you call it seven billion. Yes, and what do you think the breakup of, of, of children under the age of going to make it? What two billion of those? Or? Oh yeah, at so, least at least uh, half of your children are going to make it, and uh, you'd say at least uh, two billion is going to make it. Okay, so out of two billion. Um, how many adults have we got? We've got seven billion. Seven. Just right, divide two seven billion by two. Billion. Yeah, but how many adults have we got? That's what I'm talking about. Well, take two. Oh well, that's half the population. Which, no, no, no. I'm talking about how many adult followers. How many oh, adults who truly believe in us? Yes. Oh, I think it's less than. I think it's less than twenty. Some have fallen away. <laughs> <laughs> Taken too long in their book or, or, or whatever. Yeah, see, um, the idea of, of having followers at the moment is uh, is great, but um, it is also a demonstration of how um, people, even when they believe, like uh, that one lady that believed 100%, and uh, um, I told her, that uh, this is the way I get things done, whether she's offended by it or not, doesn't matter. Uh, just shut up and don't criticise me the way I do things. Well, she came back and criticised me again. I said, well, look, I'll tell you what, I've already warned you, and I always keep my word. If you criticise me one more time, you're out. Well, immediately she came back with an email, so I said, well, you're out. And she was stunned by the fact because she had done some lot of marvellous work for us in recording things. Now, she'd become the greatest opponent. The queen of the trolls. Yeah. <laughs> what, what she was upset about was that, uh, I think, uh, we had done a couple of uploads with this gorgeous with woman. Entirely experimental. Let's see if we can get a few million hits. It like was your that. idea. It wasn't my idea. Yes, yeah. I know. And I wrote and told her that it was my idea. <laughs> so, you know, if Didn't you put a half anyway. naked tart on something, you'll get two million hits overnight. <laughs> Um, we tell the truth about what's going on and we get three three or four views. E even with a half-naked tart even advertising, half -naked tart. <laughs> we still get three or four views. <laughs> so now this beautiful girl was walking down the road towards this guy who had been pulled up by a cop. She was a bit of a Delveen Delaney, wasn't she? Oh, well, Delveen Delaney, you should look her up on the internet. She's gorgeous. Uh, she was with Paul Hogan. When the, uh, no, uh, yeah, the show. Yeah. Uh, you're going to criticise me? No, not, I'm just... Stop. You think I didn't know that? <laughs> so, so anyhow, this guy's got his little phone. It's an ad for the phone, right? So as the cops are sort of going to book him, he sort of types in, and walking down the street, this, this woman materialised, and she's walking towards him. She's got little mini shorts on and a, uh, a, a little singlet a shirt, right, and this magnificent body. And she's absolutely dead, dropped it gorgeous, right? And uh, as she's walking towards her in this real sort of uh, taunting, sexy way that the women can do that, uh, the coppers look at the bird and they can't take the, their eyes off this girl. See? So then this guy jumps out the car and he runs up the hill to get away from the cops. So while he's up there, the phone gets out of range and, of course, he dematerializes this girl as she's got closest now, going back to nothing. And uh, he's up on top of this hill and he's lying back against a tree thinking how clever he was. And he starts to punch in another gorgeous woman and there's this woman crawling up the hill towards him, very scantily clad. And then the battery goes flat. So, so I thought it was absolutely hilarious. 
But uh, the woman that was walking towards him had this the shirt on with a heart on it. Uh, I love Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, that's the last thing you notice because she's so gorgeous. But anyhow, that's the point. I, that's what I saw. She loves Jesus. And I thought, that's an interesting ad. And um, this is what I'm, I was uh, being accused of, being a pervert, if you like, and uh, by this woman in uh, America. She uh, had a bit of a crush on me, I think, because she referred to me as the Australian Clint Eastwood. So, um, uh, and she was a, a strange sort of a girl in a sense of daughter was homosexual and, and all that kind of thing. And um, she said to me you know, in a quick response to that, she said, you'd like to have sex with her, wouldn't you? And I said, yeah, straight back, right? <laughs> right, well, that went over like a red balloon, as you might expect. That the Messiah is saying yes that he won't have sex with this beautiful woman, you see, because her, her thoughts were all sexual. So I thought, well, I'm going, to take, I'm going to take this woman to the cleaners, right? <laughs> and that's what she come back at me with an abuse. And I said, you don't tell me how to overcome the evil of the earth. Right? Mm. So then, uh, then she became queen of the trolls. They quickly gathered oh. around her. But she'd done a marvellous job of putting everything I've ever yes. done together. Oh, and the this, record was, keeper. The record keeper. Yeah. So uh, you can get more mileage out of a person that hates you than the one that loves you. Because the one that hates you, wants, they really want to get at you. And they'll do all this work. And of course, being a, a woman of uh, uh, low intelligence, especially uh, a tainted spirituality, she'd become my, my most ardent fan as a troll, in that sense, of putting up detailed information on a computer that we had bought up. <laughs> yes, because her, she was off the net for such a long time because her computer broke down and her family <laughs> wouldn't buy it for her. They, they promised to and then backed out of it. So we organised <laughs> through eBay, then Andrew out of Texas to... Uh, paid some money. Uh, and... uh, we, we paid for it all. So, so she, yes, she did all of this on the computer that we paid for. Anyway, it was all rather hilarious and we've got great mileage out of it. And the bottom line is that... Uh, she and Oliver Crew won't be around much longer anyway. No. So the stupid woman, they're living in a nation that is being consumed by radiation. And uh, she's concerned whether I feel that a woman with I love Jesus on a T-shirt uh, was, she put it entirely a sexual uh, overtone on it. And it was your idea to do it in the first place. Yes, I, I, I suggested, well, why don't, why don't we see if it makes any difference to our view count? Which I, I wrote and I explained. I said, look, it was my, my idea. No, it didn't mean anything. However, we know now that, uh, well, that, that was all set up, I think, because uh, she did. She became quickly the queen of the trolls and all gathering around and to now, stop Brian Lenigan. Get yourself like a Martin. magnet, put it in your cheese, put it in uh, underneath the butter container, oh, and put it in finished. your milk, Yep. and that will take any plutonium out of it. Okay, time is up. Later, Gators. Right. <laughs>